Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint, and today we're taking a look at a new monitor from LG, the 40WP95C, which is a 40-inch ultra-wide curved monitor with a 5K 2K resolution. It's got pretty much everything that you would need from a productivity monitor, including a 21 by 9 aspect ratio, Thunderbolt 4 ports, picture by picture modes, and of course, decent picture quality. So today we'll get this unboxed, set it up, and show you why I switched to this over the 38-inch ultra-wide that I had before. Plus, as I work from home full-time, I wanted a monitor that would be perfect for both Windows and Mac as well as being decent for productivity. Thank you to LG for sponsoring today's video, although all of the opinions are 100% my own. Oh, and if you want to see a 2022 desk setup tour, please let me know in the comments. Okay, so here's the box that it comes in, and we've got all of the usual branding and information on the side here, so you want to look through the different specs that's available. But we'll get this opened up and see what we get. First up, we've got the two-part stands. That's the part that clicks into the back as well as the feet. And then there's the box of accessories, which we will take a look at in a second. And then, of course, we've got the screen itself, which is pretty well packaged. Right, so inside this accessory box, it comes with a Thunderbolt 4 cable, which is perfect for connecting and powering my MacBook. Then we've got another USB-C cable, a display port, an HDMI cable, a cable tidy clip, and a power cable. Plus, of course, we've got all of the manuals and the warranty information, but that's all we get. Now setting up this monitor literally takes you a few minutes and it's a completely tool free install. You just need to lay the monitor down on either your desk or the box that it came in, line the rear bracket up and click it in. Now we grab the feet of the stand and you attach it to the bracket. Tighten up the inbuilt screw and we're good to go. So yeah, this one click stand and setup is great and also means when you want to remove the stand again, you simply press this small button on the back and a monitor will lift straight off. Now, while we've got the monitor this way round, let me show you around the back. So first up, I love this white back panel we've got here. It looks really clean and fresh. Then we've got the LG brand in across the top here, which is nice. And you will notice we've got quite a few ports here, which I think are probably enough for most setups. So we've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports. We've got one in and one out. A display port, a headphone port, two HDMI 2.0 ports, and the power port. Then around the side of the monitor, we've actually got two USB 3.0 ports. These will be ideal for connecting your external devices and then using the screen as a hub. And one awesome thing about this monitor is the PSU is built in, and that means there's no external power brick to worry about hiding. And this is a huge advantage over the 38 inch monitor that I had before. Also, as the Thunderbolt 4 port has a power delivery of 96 watts, it will easily power your connected laptop or your MacBook. And that's how I'm using it. So I'm actually using this screen with my 16 inch MacBook Pro. And that's with a single one cable setup. Not only does it look clean, but it means I only have to plug one cable in once I've docked it. So the 40WP95C is a 40 inch ultra wide curved monitor and coming from using a 38 inch for the last seven months, it turns out those extra two inches does make a difference. I'm already seeing the increased screen real estate here, having used it over the last two weeks. Now I use this setup for everything, practically every single day. And one of the biggest reasons I like using an ultra wide is for the incredible screen real estate that we get. Everything just looks better. And from a productivity point of view, it's awesome. I have tried using two screens side by side, but I always come back to an ultra wide. If I've got something like Final Cut Pro open while editing videos, I can see the entire timeline in one single view. I don't need to zoom out or scroll left and right as the screen is big enough to view at all. And not only that, but this is a 5K 2K display with a resolution of 5120, by 2160. So the height is the same as you would get from a 4K monitor, meaning we see more than a typical Quad HD Plus display. And on top of that, it is better quality. The 21 by 9 aspect ratio is really wide, and because there's so much more width and height, you're able to snap multiple windows or apps side by side. Most days I will have at least two or three windows open, and that could include Final Cut Pro, a live stream on YouTube, and a script or Notion. And seeing all of these windows just there makes my day so much easier. And it's always going to be a productivity booster as you can see what you're working on without having to tab between different windows. The same goes for when I'm recording audio. I can have my script open alongside the software I'm using without really compromising on either. And with a screen of this size, there's always going to be enough room for at least two or three windows. And if you wanted to know which app I'm using to snap these windows, it's called Magnet. I did talk about this in a video last year, and it's something that I use every day, even on my MacBook when it's not connected to the screen. It lets you arrange your windows and change the layout, either by dragging them, using keyboard shortcuts, or using the layout window at the top. Now, it's not just about the screen size and the screen real estate that's impressive with this monitor, it's the quality as well. So this is a nano IPS panel with HDR10 and a wide color spectrum. This means it's ideal for creative work where the colors or color reproduction is important. Now, I sit and look at this screen for the entire day and it looks great. The image always looks detailed and the colors look accurate and vibrant, and that's perfect for editing photos with. 
And as for the text or the sharpness, well, it's actually pretty good. Well, this is where I actually write my scripts from. So being able to see the text on screen without it looking too blurry or actually too sharpened is important. And as this monitor has an anti-reflective, almost matte looking screen, it means that even if you're using it near a window like I do, it doesn't really reflect. There is some slight glare depending on how bright your room is behind you, but it's easy enough to watch and it will likely reduce eye strain. Now, in terms of the brightness, well, this has a brightness of 300 nits, which on paper doesn't sound like a lot. But if you're using it in a dark, room or a light balanced room is absolutely fine. In fact, I've been using this at around 40 to 50% brightness and that's more than enough for me. But if you've got a really bright room or maybe you're using it outside with tons of natural light, this could be a problem. It does actually have an ambient light sensor built in and that means you can adjust the brightness of the screen depending on the ambient surroundings. This also helps with eye strain as you're not blinding yourself at night or if you're sat in a dark room. So this monitor comes in at a maxed out refresh rate of 72Hz which is an obvious bump up from 60Hz but it's not quite as high as some of the other monitors that we've seen. Saying that if you're using it for any kind of creative work 60Hz is likely going to be the setting that you would use anyway. Moving around and scrolling at 72Hz is as smooth as you would like it to be and it's really enough for most situations. Oh, and one thing to mention, if you do want to make use of those 72Hz via Thunderbolt 4, make sure you have the Thunderbolt out setting on the monitor set to off. If you turn it on, it will actually limit your refresh rate to just 50Hz. I did this by mistake when setting it up and it took me ages to work it out. Now the viewing angle on this is around 178 degrees, which means you can see the content off center and you're not really going to lose or compromise any of the detail or contrast or the colors. But most of the time, like myself, you'll be watching it straight on, so it won't make a huge difference. And as I mentioned before, I do literally sit at this desk for 5 to 10 hours a day as I do work from home. So this setup isn't just for show. Most days I actually alternate between my two machines. So I've got a Windows laptop for my day job in web design and development. And I've got my MacBook Pro for everything else. And that includes things like my YouTube work, photo editing, emails and browsing. Sometimes I'll switch between the two by toggling the input. And sometimes I will actually use the picture by picture mode that's built in. So here I can actually have both inputs, a Thunderbolt and an HDMI port showing at exactly the same time. Now for me, honestly, this is one of the best features of this monitor and it's something that my previous one did, but I've never had it before. But really having two devices running at the same time on the screen can be seen as a real game changer in terms of productivity. Now I'm not sure what the exact dimensions are of the two screens here, but it's like having two monitors on the desk. As for the design, I think it looks kind of minimal with its virtually borderless edges and the stand has this nice matte silver look to it. And as mentioned earlier, the cable management clip means that you can easily hide all of the cables from hanging down behind. Also, the stand does have some decent adjustments to allow you to set it up for your needs. So firstly, you can move it up and down as you would expect. I've actually got it set to the minimum here as I am using a monitor riser. It can then tilt so you can point it up or slightly down. You can swivel it left and right, ideal for showing your screen to others. And finally, you can very slightly tweak it horizontally in case you need to keep it level. And if you didn't want to use the provided stand, although I think it's pretty decent, you can mount this using a bracket with the provided VESA compatibility holes. Well, you might wonder whether you can use this monitor for gaming on. Well, technically, yes, you can. It's got all of the available ports at the back, either DisplayPort, HDMI, or USB-C. And it's also got AMD FreeSync, and that will obviously help you with the stuttering or screen tearing while you're playing games. And it's got a five millisecond response time. Now, this is not fast by any means, and playing FPS games probably will be unplayable for most. But for anything else, you're good to go. It also means if you want a one monitor setup, which will be primarily used for productivity, but you might play the odd game from time to time on the side, well, this monitor will work well, especially with that picture by picture mode if you were to plug in, say, a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. But to be honest, if you're after a gaming monitor and that's what you will primarily use it for, this isn't the one to go for. Go for something that is gaming focused, something like the GP950 or even the C2 OLED. Now, when I'm listening to music or editing videos, I will often use some form of headphones, but there are times where I don't need to or want to wear headphones while I'm working, but also I don't really have the space for speakers on my current desk. Fortunately, this monitor does have two 10 watt stereo speakers built in. These obviously won't replace any dedicated speakers that you might have on your desk, but they are perfect for those times where you do need something for everyone to hear. Maybe having some ambient music on in the background or watching some YouTube videos. And a few other features is worth mentioning. Well, if you fancy having two of these 40 inch monitors side by side on your desk, well, you can actually daisy chain them using the Thunderbolt 4 port on the rear. It does also have some on-screen controls too, where you can personalize the screen for your own viewing experience. Things like changing the picture modes, brightness, contrast, and color temperatures. You can view and change the input settings and various other things.
So a question you will likely want to ask is, is it worth buying? Well, coming from the 38 inch ultra wide that I had before, it is a slight step up in size, but for the bump in resolution, the extra ports and the adjustable stand is a huge selling point. If you're after an ultra wide monitor this year, I can easily recommend this one with no noticeable downsides. It's a great all round productivity monitor that works well with both Mac and Windows. Price wise, well this comes in at £1,500 or $2,000 and that's a lot for a monitor, but it is comparable to other monitors of the same size and spec and you are getting a 40 inch ultra wide here. Plus it's essentially as good as having two or even three smaller screens but in one neat package. I have put a link down below to this exact monitor if you want to check it out. So drop a nice ultra wide in the comments and I will give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my LG C2 video next, as it covers LG's latest OLED TV, which I unboxed last month. Thanks for watching. Please like, sub and follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.